Welcome back to Tea in the Garden with your hosts, Priscilla, Savannah, and Lauren. We are the collective creators of Ancient Soul Gardens, and this is our podcast all about cosmology, spirituality, integration, living as neurospicy people, running successful businesses, and everything in between. So here we are. Uh, what are we talking about today, guys? <laughs> I, I want to talk about <clears throat> being a recovering bridge burner and shifting the perspective from like this or that, them or us, mm. right? Like all the ways we draw division in our life and then like cut things out when we don't have to do any of that. Can we talk about that while some simultaneously talking about how it seems like everything is in chaos when you start to decide to not do those things. Ooh. That, right? Because that seems to say be more. Say more. Please say more. Well, <laughs> you know, so it just just so happens that when you start to like we are breaking these bigger patterns or or when people come up against bigger patterns, the universe has a funny way of making sure that you have every opportunity to get this done. They give you every challenge, everything that could go wrong, every weird left field thing. When you're starting to tackle these really, really big beliefs or ways of being, um, ways of thinking, programs, mindsets, etc., it's, if not already, seems to be that things hit the fan. Mm -hmm. But I feel like it's in a, it's for us, right? Everything is happening for us. And I feel like the universe, when you decide, okay, I'm going to tackle this huge way of thinking that I've been done my whole life. The universe says, okay, I'm going to give you every single challenge. And if you learn this lesson, all of this is going to change. All of this is going to shift. But if not, you're going to suffer. Mm, that's because, well, integration is kind of a bitch, right? Yeah. I think that's what you're describing. Like, okay, you want to do it the right way, mm -hmm. which has better rewards and fewer pains. It's just going to be more effortful. Right. Mm -hmm. It's going to take, gonna take everything. more out of you. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, it's not like even like make you do more. It's going to require more of your courage. It's going to require mm -hmm. more of your patience, mm -hmm. understanding, compassion. It's going to require you to show who you are and yeah. that's got to match up. And it's so mm -hmm. easy to feel sometimes when we're in the thick of these experiences, you know, that we journey through, especially we consciously sign up for when we're healers, right? We're, we're signing up very willingly more than many people you could say to face these things repeatedly to alchemize them, it can feel in the thick of it like life is punishing us or sometimes our our lowercase s self, that ego self can feel like a victim to life, right? Or the universe or feel like there's a punishing force. And I've seen how much this one does a huge disservice to us, of course, as we know, right? Being stuck in that, it creates a lot of unnecessary suffering but also I, I feel like it's so constructed by the Western mind. Mm -hmm. And this is a whole nother, another note here, but I, I've noticed that that concept isn't really even in the psyche of the East. Because Can you clarify what concept again? Yeah, like this idea that there's a that life is or God is a punishing force. And I think mm -hmm. so much of it comes from Abrahamic tradition. Right. That there Versus is something for you. Yeah. Like there's something external that's judging you, that is punishing you as a sinner, that is out to get you. And whether or not you grew up in the church or whatever, it's so much a part of our culture. Do you know what I mean? That mm -hmm. it it's so easy to fall into that. And the irony is what I've seen at least when I've traveled, and I would love to hear your guys' thoughts too. What I've seen when I've traveled to indigenous cultures around the world, whether it was South America or India um, or somewhere else, that people who have so much less 
and have every reason to feel like victims of the world don't. Right. They just don't. <laughs> they don't. And they are the most present and powerful people, even in the midst of a lot of adversity. You know what I mean? So it's a really interesting thing to think about. Mm -hmm. So, so the question becomes, how do we integrate without creating unnecessary separation in our life mm. and not punish ourselves in the process? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here we go. We've, we've discovered the, the kernel of the podcast. Mm -hmm. I have been called a glutton for pain in the past. Ooh. To this day, my partner calls me out. Like you're punishing yourself. You're punishing yourself. Like, hey, Virgo, we need you to take it down a couple notches. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Where do you think that comes from for you? Whew. Boy. <laughs> <laughs> um, being the spiritual abuse of the evangelical church and purity indoctrination and being taught that my heart is inherently evil from the time that I could walk. Yeah. And that I'm a sinner and God will punish me unless I repent and behave. Mm -hmm. Like that was my, that was my fundamental programming. <laughs> because the core belief there that they're indoctrinating us with, I grew up in a Southern Baptist church and then, and then a non-denominational church, which is very culty. Um, it, for me, they, it was, you are not good enough. You yeah. are, you are bad. You are bad and only by very witchy, the blood of Jesus Christ, can you be even, even have the hope of being, getting in, even though you're not, yeah. enough, you'll never be enough and yeah. you'll never be good enough. Right. And so for me, that was the indoctrination for me too. So it was very much like I, I formed that core belief very, very simply I'm bad. Yeah. And it was, you're a sinner. You're born a sinner. And I've seen you, Lauren, work through that for years. Yeah, I it's, well, so at twenty eight, the root. time I even chose. I like remember consciously thinking to myself, like, if I question this, I'm going to burn in hell. Mm -hmm. And being like, but if I can't even question it, <laughs> like, what am I doing? And and that was a that was during my dark, my very first dark night of the soul, my awakening. Wow. Portion. So I relate so hard to that. I relate so hard to that. I, I feel like my awakening could have in a different timeline started way earlier than it even did because mm -hmm. what stopped me for like five, six years was that, was that fear as it was like all around me as my brother was, you know, showing me 9-11 conspiracy theory documentaries and talking to me about reincarnation I was fighting him tooth and nail because I was so scared mm -hmm. and then I would go in my room at night and think about it of course and like start to think hey something may be there and then I would think oh but that's the devil like is that the devil in me you know like or like right is that the devil like convincing me to to is critical like, thought the devil is veer <laughs> off you know and it's that's actually the level of psychological mm -hmm. damage mm -hmm. that these systems are doing and i love that we're talking about this in the midst of this conversation mm -hmm. because i think it's a very important and grounded way to look at the real effects of religion uh, particularly abrahamic tradition and what it does what it does even heavily i think more to women because women on top of that already then have different conditions you know what i'm saying like we have even more of the the conditions underlying this we're extra evil because we have we're extra, extra evil we're, we're 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 the temptation right we're the problem the demonization of the feminine the total removal of the feminine in the church and you know that's a whole other thing which i think we should do a separate podcast Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene. Yeah, yeah. we definitely we have to do it I am so yeah. into. Yeah, we got to do a dark feminine and just divine feminine <clears throat> episode or multiple episodes about that. Um, but like that is so it goes so deep. And actually, it's kind of crazy where we got to this point, because while I was in India, I haven't even got to tell you guys this. So everybody's hearing the story for the first time. 
while I was in India, I, t- I mentioned one message to you guys. I said, I'm going through like a really intense yes. <laughs> death process as I was going, I was, as I was traveling over and it was so cosmic that I knew it was cosmic, but it was so extremely painful because it was like, you know, those moments on the path where externally nothing is actually wrong, but, but it's like the perfect condition to trigger something so particular in you that needs to be (laughs) worked on or looked at. So that's basically what was happening to me. And then one of the, you know, first nights in, in India, I got into this really crazy conversation by happenstance that I was completely resisting having, by the way. And my brother's wife asked me about my guru and what had happened and where, where was I really at? Like, she just wanted to hear from me. And the tea. Yeah, here's some tea. And <laughs> as I was traveling to India, I started feeling a lot of stuff come up related to that, which I didn't anticipate, but like obviously makes sense. And then as I was there, I was feeling a lot of sensitivity around that. And it was totally like, in some ways, like a little PTSD stuff happening, right? Where I was like, everything that I associate to India, also I associate to that. So Mm. it was bringing up a lot. How our connect it and how our nervous systems connect it. Yeah. Yeah. And even as I'm talking about it, I'm like, (laughs) I feel so nervous, you know? And I was feeling this really like I'm about to implode but I can't bring myself to talk about it and I don't feel like I can talk about it and then she asked me this question and it was such a blessing actually because I needed to clearly I really needed to and after hours and hours and hours talking it to like 2 3 a.m I felt like this huge release happened for me that I didn't even know how badly I like needed it you know and I needed to talk it out but how this ties into what we're speaking about. I realized at the end of the hours of conversation that it tied to this exact same freaking thing. The original programming and beliefs and core understandings I had about myself and the world and God from my upbringing in the church and my first concepts of myself and that I was still having this exact same feeling and fears just put on another thing and really, really well disguised, <laughs> like really well disguised, <laughs> like what so, so, so cunningly disguised to my own self, you know? And when I was fe- like getting asked about those things, right. I was like, why is there this like r- literally freezing, like freezing, crippling fear inside of me to even talk about it? And I, and I, somebody asked me, I forget who, but somebody was like, are you scared to even like speak out because you think that something will happen or like something is wrong for you? Like, mm. and I was like, oh my like God, you'll be I, realized, I realized I had this, I just started bursting into tears because that feeling was, what if I'm wrong? What if I'm wrong? Then what? That's how they get you. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. This came up for me in therapy last week. (sighs) Wow. Because we discovered this because we were talking about some a tool that I'm learning to use in uh, my very interpersonal relationships, and one of those tools is called Fast. And in the first part of Fast, it's like a self evaluation to is this is this like appropriate for me to engage in or not a Um, conversation usually or situation. And the first one F, is it fair? And I was like, what's fair? I don't know. Right. I'm constantly questioning my reality. Mm -hmm. Oof. I'm constantly, this is making me emotional. Yeah. But I was taught that from a beginning, you know, that like, always, I didn't feel bad. I didn't feel like a sinner. I didn't feel like, Mm -hmm. Me as a little girl or me as a young woman, you know, had ill intent or was evil or said, and, and, you know, so, and it goes deeper into even like my familiar relationships who were deep indoctrinated Mm -hmm. within the church, you know? So it was very like, 
you know, the woman is quiet and you just, you do what the man says and you, you, they're the man of the house and they make the rules and you, you better listen, you know? So it's like, what is fair? What is reality? What is safe? Is my right. opinion, is my thoughts, are they right? Are they, am I wrong? Like, so questioning yourself, yeah. questioning your reality. Woo. Oh my God. Yeah. It the goes. Permission to be right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I mean, it's the perfect example of the crazy psychological damage that happens over long-term abuse that is so hard for people who haven't been through it to understand the years of deprogramming, the layers that continue to come up, Mm -hmm. what lingers in you for so long. And people on the outside sometimes think like that, but, but like, just stop feeling that way. Or why, why you like, why are you doing that to yourself? Or you're so insecure, whatever it is. And it's like, you don't understand what, as a child being gaslighted to your reality for your entire childhood does to you. <laughs> like mm-hmm. that's what we mm-hmm. all experienced actually. I have, all experienced. I have an example <clears throat> recently yeah. on an effect of that I'm still experiencing. So I've been on a healing path for 10 years. I'm going to be 30 in a few months. And the other night my partner laid down a boundary mm-hmm. and I didn't recognize that it was a boundary because if I'm being honest, that's like a maybe four four or five-year-old installation for me from inception. Um, and so I thought, I was so confused. I was like, why is he mad at me? Why is he talking to me like that? Like, why is he being like that? He sounds like he's being condescending to me. Like, genuinely confused what was happening. And it was literally him just like saying, no, I will not do that. Yeah. And I literally, he, until he literally said, that's just my boundary, I didn't even recognize in my mature ass brain, 10 years on my healing path, I've been through lots of therapy as well. I didn't, I still didn't recognize what a boundary looked like in practice. Yeah. In that moment, it's, it can be like, you can, you can catch it in so many places. Right. And like, that is the healing, but it, it is like a long-term game. And that's why I hate the lingo the language around you're healed like that that doesn't exist I really don't believe that because when you do the work you know what that looks like and how it is a continuous thing like yeah we've made a shit ton of progress that we can't negate and there are moments like this that are gonna continue to expand us and and ultimately they're such a gift because they're showing us things that we wouldn't otherwise know we're holding. You know what I mean? And Mm -hmm. when, when I was sitting in that moment, also, you know, having a lot of tears and such fear, like just that total scared inner child, right. Feeling in me talking about it all. I had this epiphany. My mom actually helped reflect it to me, which was really beautiful that she was like, Cause I was like, what if I'm wrong? Right. That was what I was, the, the fear I was giving voice to. And she was like, well, do you like want to believe in a God that would punish you? Even if you were like, do you believe in a God that would punish you? Even if you were wrong. And I was like, like, no, <laughs> like I don't. Right. I like, I, I realized that a long time ago that that's why I stepped away from the church in the first place. Like I was like the God, I know. Even if, even if, you know, me as a child is making a mistake, would there be a hatred to that? Would there be a judgment of that? A smiting of that? Like, no, no, mm-hmm. that's not love. That's not the divine. That's not the divine. I know. That's not the divine I experience. And so even just like, you know, hearing that and connecting that again, I was like, oh, I just felt like such a healing relief happen, you know, for me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Isn't that just like the ultimate separation? Like yeah. breaking yeah. the divinity within yourself from a young age? Mm-hmm. Yes. Which is like the first thing you were talking about too, is this concept right. of se- segregation, right? Mm-hmm. separation br- burning bridges inside outside it's the same right mm-hmm. yeah that black, white thinking all or nothing this or that 
Like it's all, right. it's all connected. And I think it, it instills in us at a very early age shame, which is the control mechanism. <laughs> yep. Right. Which is why I think we also, when we feel great shame or when we feel discomfort, especially in relationships, we want to run. We want to book it. Mm -hmm. We want to burn the bridge. Yes. We want to totally but, shut, shut down. Yes. But I think as we're starting to even integrate the God that I know that the God, goddess, universe, creator, source, whatever you want to call it, energy is, is not about shame and is not That's about true. separation and you don't have to, everything doesn't have to be so extreme. Oh right. Do or die. Like heaven or hell. Yeah. I'm thinking about the book Course of Miracles, which talks a lot about forgiveness and how on a very high spiritual level, no one actually ever does anything wrong. Mm -hmm. And so forgiveness is automatic. Right. It's inherent because mm -hmm. there's nothing to forgive. It, it, it also reminds me of a Conversations with God. Have you guys read, have either of you read Conversations with God? Oh, I that have. is like one of my favorite books of all time still to this day. The whole series is amazing, but it's, it's like, I would still recommend you read it. It's so good. I actually still need to read A Course in Mir Miracles also, but it talks so much about this concept of what is, what is God um, and how do we know it? How do we experience it? What is the truth behind all these these concepts and words? And it's it's very healing, especially for those that were coming from a Christian background. You know, mm -hmm. um, it closes the loop on a lot of things. You know, it gave me the space. Reading that book gave me the space to quite like allow think, myself to go there. Think about things. <laughs> yeah. It did. It did. So it's, it's a beautiful thing. Um, Sav, I would love to hear like what your experience of that bridge burning has been in your life. And, and <laughs> I know you had a recent epiphany about kind of where you felt it was. Coming oh from. yeah. We're going to talk about my mom. Here we yeah, go. Mother, <laughs> let's go. Yeah, we, we, we got pretty deep we conversations. <laughs> Uh, so I have a Scorpio stellium, and I'm a recovering bridge burner. And again, any any bridge burning we do is just us replicating that I must create separation, cast out what is bad, right, to keep what is good. So yeah, I've just I've had so many relationships, friendships, professional. Um, romantic relationships that I reached a point in the relationship where they had hurt me enough that I was just, I just door slammed them. And I was like, you don't get to do that anymore. And we're probably never going to talk again. And it's like all these years of history and beauty and good memories. And like maybe in the future we could have some sort of partnership or some sort of connection or anything like that. It just, I cut the cord by never see you never and it's like I've done that so many cycles in my life with so many souls and and places and opportunities where I'm just like nope clean cut and sometimes you need a clean cut right sometimes you need a clean cut but to for that to be the norm it's not energetically healthy but I realized I had this epiphany the reason that I do that, and this is something that's really pulled me out of like, I don't want to do that. I want to take the extra time to show and conjure those fruits of the spirit, right? Where I was saying before, like compassion, patience, yeah. love, understanding, right? I want to take the time to conjure those fruits and integrate and resolve and speak and let it hurt, but alchemize that and, and come out the other side. Um, because I don't want to keep repeating this pattern of when I was a young child, I had a very uh, emotionally overbearing parent, mother, right? And from the time that I can remember, I was her 
emotional dumpster, right? Like there, there is no better training I've received as a shaman <laughs> because, you know, you know, they say they want you to be 25 or 20 years experience. Here I am. <laughs> like I have that experience. So what I would do to mentally, physically, emotionally be able to cope with taking on a grown adult's emotions, anger, disappointment, their feelings, their thoughts about what's going on in their life, like almost as their therapist, as their shaman, being five, six, seven years old, is I will shut her out. Mm -hmm. I would emotionally shut her out. I would, I would, you know, she'd get angry and take it out on me and obviously I'd be very upset and cry. And so I'd like go to my room and I'd write in my journal, like, we don't trust her. We're never going to trust her again. Like you, like we're not going to hang out, like write down reminders to myself. And I'm like in first grade that like, I am to shut this person out because I literally cannot cope with it, right? When you're a first grader. So then I replicated that pattern for how many years after, right? Decades of like, you hurt me, I'm going to shut you out. Because it worked and it was necessary at that time. That's the thing with trauma, right? The, when the traumatic pattern starts, it's out of necessity to survive. Yep. But then we keep repeating it where it's not necessary to survive and it just perpetuates our suffering and the separation. Unless we do it differently. Right? Oh, tell me. Okay, that's my, that's my thing. You tell me more about that. Right. So that's what we're talking about. That's, that's the way to break it. Right. And that's the kind of like, it's not a punishment. It's replicating so that you can do it differently so but if we keep repeating the same way doing the same thing that's what perpetuates it and that's what we're talking about when we say you suffer we create our own suffering we stay in unnecessary suffering instead of just surrendering and being like okay i'm not going to do it this way anymore i'm going to do it some other way literally any other way right, right? <laughs> at first right but that's kind of like that that theory of like the analogy of you learn to swim really quick when you're thrown in the deep end, you will try anything to stay afloat versus when you're holding on to the side. So I think that's why that happens. I think that's why things get perpetuated when we decide, okay, I'm going to heal this because you're diving in, you're allowing yourself to feel it. You're allowing yourself to be immersed in it. You're allowing yourself to feel all of the things that you created the coping me mechanisms with to avoid in the first place. Right. Mm, that that reminds me of the like the true meaning of karma and a lot of people in the west right we have this idea like karma punishes karma is a bitch like karma is vengeance like that's not at all what karma is right it's again it's like from the same source of what we're talking about of these like biases of our understanding of the divine of the forces of the universe of all these things right but what karma really is, is action. In, inherently, it's an action, but karma is a repeating action. It's all it is, is a cycle of choice, a cycle of action that is continuing itself. And what does it mean to break karma or free yourself from karma is to literally break the cycle. Like that's what it is that's the entire journey of our human experience is to continuously break these little little big medium whatever karmas in our lives that are just <laughs> cycles they're just cycles that we have chosen and then may have served us right may have served us for some time may have served us for many lifetimes but we're at a so, point of change i have a question on that so now we're talking about not repeating the same actions as being the definition of breaking karmic cycles, right? Mm. And we started this conversation with integration, not burning bridges, but that being a little bit more difficult. How do we approach that without the inherent mindset of I have to suffer, I have to be punished to change? Mm. I love that question. 
Okay. I think we're all going to have similar, but also just different sides of the same answer. But I think it's awareness. You bring your awareness to it. Awareness is key. Awareness is key. But it is. It is because when you're aware and when you're with it, you're learning to create the capacity to witness mm -hmm. and be with and experience what you're going through. And that is what creates the capacity to start making decisions, new ones, versus going off of old habitual cycles or programs, mm -hmm. right? The awareness, with awareness there, you can do, you can change almost anything, if not everything. Yeah. I think generally I speaking with, with a, especially when you're talking about long-term patterns or trauma, what is also required with that awareness is practicing a lot of self-compassion. And with that means we accept whatever we're experiencing. Like we're accepting the, the, the rage. We're ex accepting the, the numbness we're accepting the frustration that we're feeling the shit again <laughs> you know like even that which then I want to get frustrated about I have to exercise more compassion in that moment for myself so that I can hold it all from a space of awareness and immediately what comes to my mind when you ask that question is response versus reaction which is a very very different thing and it's like it's not that we can never repeat actions, right? We spend a lot of our life repeating actions. What's the difference between actions that are generating karma and actions that are not is that one's coming from a reaction and one is coming from a response. Yes. That's good. You, you know what Sam tells me in those moments where you're like trying to accept the frustration of an intense negative feeling is he tells me, can you breathe around this feeling? Can you expand it? Because usually when we have those big, intense emotions, there's not room in our container for anything else at that moment. And so he tells me, can you expand that container to create room? Almost like nesting it, like giving it some breathing room to happen. Can you breathe around the anger? Because then that space gives you that option to consciously respond. I think we've kind of narrowed it down, like the difference between a, even if it might look like the same, the difference between perpetuating our karma and shifting into healing and doing something different mm -hmm. is responding versus reacting. And that's a big switch to flip. It's a process, right? It's not just like a, it's not just one switch. I think even it's a, it's a series of small choices, small practices, mm -hmm. small boundaries. It's not that all or nothing. It's not that right. all, the way, all the way off, good, bad. It's creating and allowing micro decisions to and and seeing you know reconditioning yourself to see that it doesn't have to be this or that all or nothing so and that's what gives you, right and that's what gives you the response the freedom to respond versus react mm -hmm. but different it is mindset, different calibration mm -hmm. different vibe yeah oh healing oh. We are coming to kind of, even though this is a short and sweet one, I feel like we're coming to a natural, like. I think we came full circle. Yeah. And I think we can, another one can be longer. And I think we should continue talking on this. Like maybe the next one should be diving deeper into like the dark feminine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I mean, we're onto something here. Mary Magdalene. Yeah. I, one of the, my most favorite lines that Sam has ever written that I've read is Eve bit the apple and humanity was born. Yes. She's so good. 
that's it for this episode. We're going to continue this conversation in the next episode where we will be diving very deep into the feminine, the dark, fem- divine feminine, Mary Magdalene, and just how society has cut women and the feminine and the intangible out of the realm of value. That is why I believe, we believe that the world is sick. But it's starting to come around and that's why, mm-hmm. you know, the conversations are happening. That's why, you know, we're all feeling the way we're feeling. And so, yeah, we're ready to dive deep. And so we're going to talk about that in the, the following episodes. Mm-hmm. So thank- we're going to talk about the separation of casting Eve out yeah. out of the Garden of Eden. I want right. to, I have so much to say. Okay. See you guys next time. Okay. Bye.